Hello and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to be looking at the Bucking Bronco guitar. Well, since this is a Bucking Bronco cowboy guitar, I thought it'd be appropriate to have this little video made by a fire. Now, this guitar was made in 1946 by the T. Eaton Company, uh, made in Canada, and they made several variations of this guitar. Um, when I first got this, the client brought it in, and I was like, wow, like, this is a really old guitar. I didn't know anything about the guitar at the time, and I was like, uh... I mean, the top was totally collapsed. The bracing on the inside uh, came, was separated. It was loose inside the guitar. You could rattle it. Uh, the top was... Uh, <laughs> the sides had... Uh, like, the top and the back on older guitars, the wood shrinks. So then... But the, the rim doesn't shrink. So the top was smaller than the rim, so the parts of the rim were... were protruding out of the guitar. Um, the fretboard had uh, these old style frets, uh, um, bar frets they were called. Uh, and they're all like convex and the fretboard was convex and the, it was just all like you look down it and you're just like, can you even like, buy these frets anymore? Um, so, um, <laughs> so I was like, okay, so the first thing I did is, I was, the client didn't want the finish, it didn't want it refinished, they just wanted original, like had the original patina of the guitar, and so my only option was to do it cold, which means not using heat. Uh, now, usually when you take a guitar apart, you use heat to soften the glue so it, you know, you don't tear the guitar apart, uh, like rip it, like, you know, rip pieces of wood apart. Um, so, I decided to do the cold method, and I basically took a, a pie serving knife, because they're kind of dull, but they're wedged, and you can, and I just pulled all around the outside perimeter of the top. And it came off really, like the glue was just totally like done, it was dried out. I believe it was old hide glue, so it was really just gone. And then I talked to the client and I said, you know, do you want this guitar to really play nicely? And they're, oh yeah, like, you know, they want to, this is more of a sentimental guitar rather than a collectible item for them. So I was like, well, probably a good idea just to replace the fretboard because it's in such bad condition. Uh, so once they said, okay, yeah, let's replace the alteration, um, you know, it was the fretboard and the bracing. So I was like, okay, well, I didn't know what kind of uh, neck joint it was because these older production guitars, sometimes they use doweling, sometimes they use dovetail joints, um, sometimes they used to use like a butt joint, like, just crazy. Um, so, uh, and then I took the heat lamp and I softened the glue and I took off the tongue of the fretboard just to see inside. And sure enough, it was a dovetail joint. Um, so I ended up having to use uh, steam. Um, now using hot steam, the, uh, the bad thing about using steam is once it hits the finish, it, it totally just boils the finish off. Like it steams it off, it turns it white. Uh, which it did a little bit, um, but it was minimal. Um, so anyway, I got the neck off, uh, and I took the top off. I took all the braces that were left on. It was like one half of a brace. I actually didn't even have to pry it off. It just I just hit it and it came off. Um, 
So I, you know, lightly sanded the insides, the back and the top. Uh, the bracing I used was actually twice as wide on the back uh, to give me twice as much surface gluing surface area. Um, and the top, the upper transverse brace, which is a very important structural part of the top because um, it supports the neck, I made it three times as wide. So it has three times the gluing uh, surface. Uh, now originally this top was ladder braced so it had like I think four braces going like a ladder um, and the problem with that bracing is that it was strong enough but there's definitely other stronger bracing patterns um, so I was talking to one uh, builder uh, Rick Turner actually which is a real honor because he's been building for many like decades <laughs> you know very well known luthier in bc um and you know i was just talking to him and he's like you know maybe you should use uh, fan bracing and i was like fan bracing that's like in like classical like nylon string guitars you know uh and then he's like yeah you know and I'm pretty sure the reason why he saw he thought fan bracing because he saw the top and how it was all warped um, and with fan bracing you have three braces going like this from about this area here and it helps to stabilize the top and you actually put a little bit of a radius into the brace so that when it goes into the guitar it actually spring loads the top so that counteracts the down pressure of the bridge. So I was like, after I thought of it, I was like, that's actually brilliant. So that's what I did. I put a fan bracing inside. Um, there's another ladder brace here. And then there's two braces going here to support and to keep the mountain of a warp that was in there. Uh, and then a huge upper transverse brace. Now to flatten this top, it took me two hours of literally using a clothes iron and a steamer and I steam the back and just like keep on flipping the back to or keep on flipping it back and forth to make sure it wasn't melting the cowboy and the the button bronco and the finish and I was actually very surprised um, so I managed to get it flat and it actually, uh, I think it expanded the top again, like it made the top bigger so that I didn't have to cut the rim in half and, and shrink the rim to the size of the top. Uh, and same with the back. The back, I mean, the guitar, the, it might be a little bit of a, but I mean, it worked out really well. So yeah, so I, I glued the top back on, the, I put the bracing in the, the back, and I glued the back on. Then I had to do the fretboard. Um, now this fretboard is walnut, uh, and I stained it uh, black, and it turned out really nice. Once I burnished it, it just, it really looks, doesn't look like walnut, it looks like ebony. And I made this fretboard with a 16 foot radius. Um, so it makes it more comfortable to play. Whereas the original fretboard was just flat, which is all right for uh, like finger style and classical playing, but for chords, it's nice to have a little bit of a radius because it just makes it much more comfortable to play. The top, back, and sides are all um, birch, solid birch, which gives the guitar like a very kind of deep, like, mellow tone. So the client asked me if I was able to fix the cowboy because over years and years of the original owner, owner picking, they picked off the, just wore off the cowboy. But I took a, a marker that's specially made for uh, touching up and stuff like that. I used it to, um, <laughs> I really was like, mm. I, I just dabbed 
do, 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 and then slowly fanned and, um, you know, I found the original like cowboy print on the internet from another guitar and I just basically, you know, redid it. Now it's not exact, but when you don't see the original, you look at this and it's like, oh yeah, it actually looks pretty good. <laughs> and the most challenging part was actually doing the eyes. Because when you do eyes on it, like your facial expression with your eyes and your eyebrows, like if you're worried, your eyebrows go up, and if you're angry, like your eyebrows go down. And so for a while, I had the cowboy kind of looking like mad, like he was like, hey, you know. And then for a while, I had the cowboy looking like, oh. And I was like, no, like I want him to be like uh, confident, you know. I want this cowboy to be a confident cowboy. Um, <laughs> without further to say, let's give this guitar a play and see how it sounds. Thank mm -hmm. you. 